Enhanced Myometrial Vascularity Case Presentation and Review First, we'll have an introduction to enhanced myometrial vascularity, uterine artery malformation. Then we'll discuss the clinical issue and solution through a case presentation. Then we will review recent literature of EMV associated with retained products of conception and end with concluding remarks and key takeaway points. AVMs are defined as shortcuts of the bloodstream between an organ's arterial and venous blood supply. They are classified broadly as congenital or acquired. AVM or EMV. Improved Doppler imaging has increased the reported cases of myometrial hypervascularity, turbulence, low impedance, and high velocity flow. Congenital AVMs are exceedingly rare, while acquired AVMs are more common and may have distinct pathophysiology and clinical precautions. Thus, acquired AVMs have recently been renamed Enhanced Myometrial Vascularity, or EMV. Congenital AVMs, as stated earlier, are exceedingly rare, resulting in abnormal vascular connections, and are the result of failure in embryological differentiation of primitive vascular structures resulting in abnormal vascular connections. Enhanced myometrial vascularity is the updated term for acquired AVMs to describe acquired vascular structures by uterine trauma identified by color Doppler. Common uterine insults are dilation and keratage, uterine surgery such as C-section and myomectomy, gestational trophoplastic neoplasia, endometrial carcinoma, and infection. Case Presentation a 28-year-old G1P0 presented to a tertiary care emergency department with heavy abnormal uterine bleeding. Eight weeks prior, she had a missed abortion treated with a suction DNC. She was managed with serial beta-HCGs and on repeat ultrasound was informed she had a uterine arterial venous malformation. On presentation, her hemoglobin was 9.2 and her beta-HCG was 5.0. Further imaging was ordered. The primary imaging for EMV-AVM is ultrasound with Doppler studies. Our ultrasound findings were pertinent for retained products of conception. Doppler studies were pertinent for hypervascularity, a tangle of tortuous vessels with low resistance and high velocity and turbulent flow. Peak systolic velocity was greater than 20 centimeters a second. Additional MRI imaging with angiography may determine disease extent and confirm diagnosis. Our MRI finding was pertinent for a voluminous, ill-defined mass, complex serpentine abnormal vessel that enhanced and showed early venous return. Management of EMV-AVM is symptom-dependent. Asymptomatic patients can have expectant management with serial ultrasounds and serial beta-HCGs until resolution, as well as uterotonic medications. Symptomatic patients can be managed in a medical or non-surgical manner using mesoprostol, tranexamic acid, methargen, carboprost, GnRH agonist, danazole, and uterine balloon tamponade. Symptomatic patients with heavy bleeding may require uterine artery embolization, hysteroscopic electrosurgery, uterine slash hypogastric artery ligation, or hysterectomy. EMV associated with retained products of conception. Recent evidence suggests that ultrasound findings of EMV with retained products of conception may be a normal transient placentation phenomenon. This is due to decreased risk of hemorrhage than previously suspected. Expectant management with or without surgical removal of the retained products of conception may be considered without UAE. This more conservative management may be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. For our case, due to the patient's symptoms of heavy AUB, an acute decrease in hemoglobin, in addition to imaging with prominent abnormal vasculature with abnormal elevated flow, we took a more conservative approach and started with a UAE. This arteriogram demonstrates the EMV visualized on the right side of the uterus before and after embolization. We then conducted an immediate diagnostic hysteroscopy and confirmed retained products of conception.
then completed a suction dilation and curettage, and finished with a repeat diagnostic hysteroscopy where a non-pulsating vascular bundle that correlated in size and location of the EMV noted on previous imaging was visualized. No further interventions were deemed necessary as a significant amount of retained products of conception was removed and inadvertent trauma to the vascular bundle or intrauterine adhesive disease was to be avoided. The patient presented to clinic two weeks post-op with a resolution of her AUB symptoms and a negative beta HCG. Conclusion and key takeaway points. EMV is the new terminology for acquired AVMs. The primary imaging is ultrasound with Doppler vascular flow. EMV is frequently associated with retained products of conception and more common than congenital AVMs. Recent literature states that EMVs with retained products of conception may be a normal transient placentation phenomenon due to a lower hemorrhage risk than previously suspected, a more conservative treatment approach may be implemented. Uterine artery embolization should be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. Each patient requires individualized management based on symptoms, imaging, and plans for future fertility. The ideal management of patients with retained products of conception and enhanced myometrial vascularity remains to be determined.